Now, Dr. Morris LaRock is a leading obesity expert whose controversial approach has helped thousands of Irish people to lose weight. He has contradicted many of the theories put forward by other experts in his field and believes that we need to get to the root cause of obesity in order to treat it. Now, with two out of every five adults in Ireland currently overweight, Dr. LaRock has returned to Ireland to share his knowledge and joins us this morning to tell us about his revolutionary mental weight concept. Good morning to you, Doctor. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Thank um, you. You've written seven books on this subject. Yeah. Um, you have a clinic in Ireland which employs about 130 people. So yes, the well, results think, are there. Yes, I think there's about 30 all around the Ireland. All around the country. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's all about the root cause for you. Oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, we have uh, internationally a major problem in the world. So uh, there are more people overweight or obese on this planet than those suffering from malnutrition. The first time of history that we know of mankind. So, and even in Asia and so forth. So we, we're facing the same problem. In Canada, we have the same kind of numbers than you have here in Ireland. I was Ireland. going to ask, how do we compare? Yeah, okay. so we, we have the same kind of numbers. In, in the United States, worst. Uh, in France, a little bit less, but it's on its way up too. Um, so there's a major society problem and, and uh, so we need to find ways to be more efficient in helping people. Do you consider that obesity is not actually about food? That they're, they're uh, That's like, one of the things that you say, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I like, your, I like your question. I think food is part of it, but I mean, say, we do know that, you know, potato chips is good for health, and you, you stay slim if you, uh, Coca-Cola, Pepsi-Cola, whatever, soft drinks, I mean, is it, if you drink a lot, uh, no. I mean, why do, still, we do it. So the, the, the reason, it's not what we do, I mean, why we do it. Because we're addicted to sugar? Uh, yes, that, that's one part of the problem, you're right. And, and, and at the same time, you were going to say we're in a consuming society, we, we're bombarded by messages that we, and so we still have the choice, the liberty to, to say yes or no. Uh, and from what I've seen as a physician and seeing people for, for 30 or 40 years now, uh, is there's a lot of suffering and, and people have lost hope. They tried everything. They tried any diets on the market. Yeah. Some have been operated, some have been and so forth, and still have problems because basically they don't understand why. And, and there are two kinds of reasons. There's this physiological one, uh, and one is uh, related with sugar. Absolutely, because sugar will make you craving very easily, an hour or two after. If you don't have any proteins, and uh, so because it's digested rapidly by insulin, so you need then to have less sugar and, and probably more protein kind of food, uh, so that your the satiety will last longer. You go for maybe five hours without really being hungry, and you'll be able to control your appetite. So fatigue is another one. If, when, when you lack sleep, people will eat to give them energy and so forth, and it's automatic. This is physiological, mm -hmm. so that there are medication that will make you uh, uh, antidepressive drugs. So that's a major problem. Uh, we were conducting a study with McGill University recently in Montreal and we were searching for patients. We had a hard time finding them. 60% were on antidepressive drugs that make them overweight and diabetic later. So, and basically we come up to the first thing we need to understand. And then, then there's the physiological reason, psychological reason. Mm -hmm. And one thing now that's still working and, uh, and with McGill, it's the um, anxiety, stress. I mean, we're in a very stressful society, performing society. A and this modifies the, your body mechanism and, and would get you into sugar. And then we said sugar is, uh, is very bad because it's going to have a short period of time. And in difficult times, doctor, it's easy to opt for comfort food. We have a shot actually of Declan Leonard, just one of the many case studies that has gone through your clinic. Do we there's, have, uh, there? there's Declan before he started and um, there's the, the after there's shot. The after. So uh, now the motivation weight loss clinics are very well known all over the country but what, what you're uh, proposing or an evolution of what you do in that is what's called mental weight. So would you explain that concept to me please? Yeah, so about 30 years ago um, I was treating 
people and uh, diets and uh, exercise, just uh, regular stuff. And we, we were not satisfied with the overall result. People still, they knew, but they wouldn't do it. So uh, I came up with the idea, if you could measure what goes up in their mind, I could be maybe much more successful in helping them. And so it came up the idea of building up a questionnaire, very, very short one, it would take maybe 10 minutes for, mm -hmm. for the patient to do, and come up with an, an instant report saying, those are the behaviors, attitude, habits, that you will need to change. So we, we identified those physiological habits. Mm. Uh, is it because of sugar problems, uh, exercise, and so forth? And also all the psychological uh, depression, stress level, uh, self-esteem, self-worth, and motivation. And, and motivation in that concept, um, it's an emotion, some things we feel. Oh, I'm so motivated, I mean, uh, I will do this. Uh, see, I fall in love with somebody in the first week, so I mean, I will run on my knees to get there <laughs> so I'm motivated that's an emotion and very interestingly was because we're conducting long-term research and found very very interesting mm -hmm. things in motivation there's not one motivation there are two uh, there's the positive motivation we say okay I, I will lose weight because I will be healthier because uh, my shape will be better uh, because I won't be diabetic or mm -hmm. I will stop my needles or medication because I will lose the weight and, and so forth but Surprisingly, positive motivation is not correlated with any weight loss over time. We found that there's another motivation, which we call negative motivation, breaks. I don't want you to do it because, uh, gee, I, I will lose, I regret losing food that I like. Resentment, just, it's unfair. I mean, I, uh, I, then Why me? Too much yeah. of an effort. I mean, I can, and if I do this and I don't succeed, so doubt. Uh, and when you have one or a mixture of these, I mean, you won't lose weight. So now we have changed the way we approach people to put less emphasis on positive motivation because say, you won't be diabetic, they still eat, then they feel more guilty. Mm -hmm. uh, so then to put more on, more, uh, on eliminating the breaks that... Uh... Well, it, look, it's, a, it's an enormously complex area and we're not going to, we're only going to scratch the surface of yeah. it here, but you're in town today, you are uh, giving another one of these legendary lectures of yours. Uh, I don't know whether it's oversubscribed or not, but I'm sure if, uh, if somebody goes onto the Motivation uh, uh, Weight Loss site, they'll find out details and whether it's booked out or not. But Dr. Morris thank Rock, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you very much, both of you. Now, let's